Xiongwu Dadi was born as a prince of the Jingle Guo, a country near today's Danjiang, close to Wudang Mountain. One day, his mother had a dream in which she met Taishan Lao Jun and he fed her a golden pill. The next morning, she felt that she was pregnant. After 14 months, she gave birth to a strong and healthy prince. The prince was a smart kid and learned a lot. At the age of 16, he dreamed of Taishan Lao Jun, who told him to go to Taishan Shan, today's Wudang Shan, to cultivate Dao and become an immortal. So the prince left his home. It was an exhausting journey, and all he took was a horse and some money. On the way, he met a man who carried his mother because she was sick, and they wanted to go to a doctor. The prince didn't hesitate to give them his horse so they would have it easier. So from now on, the prince had to walk up the mountain. Later he saw a man arguing with an elderly man about his debt. The prince gave the man all his money to pay the debt. So from now on, he had nothing but the clothes he was wearing. His mother, the queen, couldn't bear to lose her son, so she went after him with just a few soldiers escorting her. Every time she got close, the prince managed to escape. Eighteen times he slipped through the woods and his mother called after him, so that the path is now called the eighteen winding path of the mother's cause. After a long and exhausting journey, the prince finally arrived at the cave big enough to live in and to cultivate the Tao. This cave is now called Taizidong, the prince's cave. Prince Cave, and it's a natural cave, uh, over 36 square meters big, and very high, and here's the place where Xiong um, Wu cultivated for 42 years. I'm sitting here at the upper Bagua Tai, the big Bagua Tai, uh, is below me, and also Zhang Zhang Hong, uh, cultivated himself here in this cave, and it's a uh, very um, spiritual place and even now since 23 years there's a hermit a Taoist named Jia uh, cultivating here and living in this cave The prince met a meditating master who taught him different practices. This Taoist was Yuan Shi Tianzun. He practiced hard every day and often found quiet places to meditate.
Now we are at the Bagua Tai below the Tai Zedong. This Bagua Tai, Bagua platform or Bagua stage is um, very famous, built in the late Ming Dynasty. And uh, this is the place where Zhang Zanfang created Tai Zi Quan. And one day he was practicing here and he observed the fight from, uh, of a snake and a bird and he realized that the soft overcome the heart and he created the eight basic techniques and the five movements of the Tai Chi Chuan. The eight techniques are Peng Yu Jian, Tai Li, Zhou Kao. The five directions is forward, backward, left and right and middle. The prince couldn't see any progress in his practice, so he decided to leave his cave and the mountain and go back home. Once the Xiong Wu Dadi practiced for a while in the prince cave, Tai Zedong, he realized that um, it was so hard, so he thought about going back home and um, he, uh, he wanted to stop to practice there to cultivate Dao. So he packed his things and uh, left the cave, go down the mountain, back to the mountain. And when he arrived here at the Mojenting, the grinding needle well, he met a woman who was grinding a thick iron, iron rod. And while he saw this, he realized that this must be crazy from a thick iron rod. Why is she grinding this? So he asked, what are you doing with this iron rod? And uh, she answered, I want to make a needle, a very small needle to make um, a dress for my daughter because she's going to get married. And uh, he said, why are you so crazy to uh, make a needle out of this thick piece of iron? This will take so long time and it's so tired to make this needle. And she just answered, because I want to have a very good needle. I want to make a very, very good needle to make a beautiful dress for my daughter. And uh, if it takes long time, I can bear this hardship, so I can get a very good meal. 
In this moment he realized that Lian Gong, so practice Gong Fu or practice Taoist, Taoist practices like Xu Xing, cultivation of Tao, uh, takes a lot of hardship and it's nothing what you can achieve from one day to another or from one year to another. It takes a long, long time. So he realized that he has to go back. And he went back to his cave and practiced for 40 years. And then he became a monk. He left the old woman, he turned around to have a last look at her, but she already disappeared. The old woman was no other than his master changed his appearance to bring Prince back on track. Three heaven goddess, and we can go further. Here, have, um, here have the statue of Shungu Dadi, and then uh, on the left side is the mother, and the right side is the father. Okay. And this is um, very seldom that they um, all together, all three together. And here is uh, the next shrine, or ne next altar is uh, the Sanqing. Um, the three highest divines, Taishan Lao Jun, uh, um, Yuan Shi uh, Tianzun, and uh, Lin Bao Tianzun. And we can go further inside. These buildings are built in the uh, late Ming Dynasty, uh, during the Judy era. These rooms are not too, uh, cannot go inside. Yes, like in the, you can have a look inside. In uh, a lot of uh, TV documentations, you see this like an oracle game. When you put the coin inside and it lands on the back of the dragon, it brings luck. If it falls on the head, it brings money. And in the mouse, um, in the mouse, it brings money. And on the head is uh, luck in the uh, relationship. Here you can go inside. Here are the, um, the shrine of the 500 uh, Lingon, uh, like the, the models, the 500 Lingon, uh, Wubai Lingon. Very, very rare. You never see this kind of things. And this is origi original. It's, uh, of course, it got lost for a certain amount of time, but this is uh, still all original. There's the shrine with the it's the um, golden boy and the jade girl beside um, the um, jade emperor. Okay, let's go. Up. Here's, um, this is the, uh, the sleeping, uh, the sleeping prince on the dragon bed. Yeah. And you can go a little bit further inside. 
people also try to throw money in the mouth of the dragon, so they get luck. Uh, you see, the, uh, if you go here, you see this, um, there's still the, the head of the statue of the prince. And this is the, the last statue in the uh, Nanyang, Nanyang Temple. It's the Jianwu Dadi. It's a very nice statue. Very beautiful. And here is another oracle game. The hitting the Jin Bell, like Da uh, Jin Qing. And if you throw through the coin and hit the bell, it will give a sound. But you see, there's a lot of coins on the floor. Yeah. So, also, like, um, uh, it's a good. Good fortune and good wealth. Did you hit the bell? Yeah. Ah, of course. We'll make some dolls. We'll make some <laughs> I'm very dolls. good practice. Yeah, <laughs> again. That was the bell too. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that. Okay, now I will pay more attention. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I can't make it three times. I don't think you made it. <laughs> I really, it's the sound. It's the uh -huh. sound. Look. I saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> when we're st standing here beside the prince uh, sleeping in the dragon bed, um, there's, a, there's a story and a legend about uh, one of the Wudang uh, immortals. His name is Chen Tuan. He's the creator of the uh, Taiji Tu, like Chen Tuan, Chen Chuan. And he cultivated in Wudang Shan for more than 23 years. And it's said that he created the sleeping meditation or sleeping practice. It's like uh, his um, nickname is uh, like Wulong. Wulong is like a uh, lying dragon. Like lying dragon. And uh, he um, developed this practice and uh, cultivated and he gave it also like taught um, Zhang Zanfang. Zhang Zafang, who is the creator and founder of the Taiji Chuan, Wudang, Wudang, Pai, Wudang Taiji Chuan. Chen Tuan was a Taoist practitioner and also a martial artist. He taught um, Zhang Zafang the Gu Jia Chuan. Gu Jia Chuan is like the very ancient original form of the Taiji Chuan. Gu Jia Chuan. And uh, Chen Tuan. He practiced the sleeping meditation. It is said like this is uh, like the uh, Shen Gu Shen means it's like the um, legendary story of how he practiced. He slept for nine years, and uh, it is said that he slept over hundred days, then woke up, did some exercise, and then sleep for hundred uh, more days. And this over nine years. When Chen Tuan left Wudang Shan, he uh, he went away to a nearby mountain area and um, he wanted to get deeper into the sleeping meditation practice so he slept under a, under a stone like under a rock and um, it is said that after some years some uh, traveler came by and saw there is somebody lying there he was very he was hidden very well so nobody would find him and interrupt his practice so when this traveler uh, found him, there was a thick layer of dust already on, like, coating the body. And uh, he woke, woke him up and first he thought he's dead. So he said, uh, are, you, are you dead or are you awake or wake up? And then uh, Chen Tuan, he woke up and he complained that he couldn't finish his, uh, his journey to the... Um, deepest spheres of the universe. You know, he, uh, he practiced like uh, in the sleeping status of the body, he practiced um, like the Yin Shen, he traveled with his spiritual body all to the universe. And um, he complained that he couldn't finish his task, his mission. The prince practiced on the mountain already for many years. The animals knew him and especially a black tiger accompanied him every day and even helped him to carry things. 
Sometimes he would meditate for a very long time and birds build a nest in his hair. Other times monkeys and other animals brought him food. One time the name Xuan Wu, dark or mystic warrior, was changed to Zhen Wu, true warrior, to avoid the use of the character Xuan since there was an imperial ancestor named Zhao Xuanlang and it was forbidden to use imperial name. So this place is where Xuan Wu Dadi uh, trained one day and uh, this young girl approached him and uh, because he was cultivating and um, he didn't want to be interrupted in his training he got a little bit uh, impulsive and stormed against her she fell down this cliff you can also have a look here it's very high she fell down this cliff and uh, in this moment he realized he made a mistake so he jumped after her to save her life and uh, in this moment the five dragons appeared and um, he ascended to heaven so this place is called um, the flying ascendance uh, rock uh, because it's a rock and um, it's a very important uh, place for uh, wudang pilgrims because this place is where xin wu dadi uh, became an immortal and then he ascended to the heavens. So behind me you will see the Lamme temple over there, the Lamme ancestral temple and there is a story behind that. Lamme is a wolf's plum and the legend is said that Xiong Dadi when he came, just came to Langshan and he already had the plan to become an immortal uh, or realize or cultivate the Tao, he used the apricot blossom uh, from the tree and the plum blossom, put them together and said, when these two become one, so when there is a fruit coming out of this blossom, he will become an immortal. And later on, um, there was a tree. Uh, growing from this uh, from these two blessings. In the main hall of the Yushigung in Wudangshan are two altars with handcrafted wooden sculptures which show the complete story of Xiong Wu Dadi. <laughs> 